Rajat Ragadia is head of research at Motilal Oswal Securities. Uh, he joins in right now to talk about uh, Motilal Oswal's first quarter earnings expectations, first quarter uh, fiscal earnings expectations. Uh, it's a keenly watched report. Uh, they've got a large number of companies under their coverage, and the report, I think, came in this morning. Rajat, good morning. Good to have you here with us. Uh, the title of the report is Dusk or Hi, Dawn. Good morning. So let me just <laughs> quickly get that out of, the, uh, out of the way. So what is it going to be, dusk or dawn? Well, uh, we think uh, we, sh we should be bracing in for some better times ahead because we have almost seen an 18 months of flat markets now. And uh, maybe this July, August, September are going to be three another months of this range. And uh, if some of the things, the way we are building up, if they pan out, then hopefully we should we should trade higher. We should be out of this range in the next three to four months. All right, let's get to earnings. Uh, aggregate earnings. Uh, how do you think they'll fare uh, fare in the quarter for the quarter? Well, this will be a tough quarter on the numbers. For our aggregates, uh, for the universe, we are looking at a fifteen percent growth in numbers. And for Sensex, we are looking at 11% growth. The difference between the aggregate and the Sensex is Kane India, which contributes 300 basis points of growth. Otherwise, I think uh, one should roughly expect 10 to 11% growth at the aggregate level this quarter. More importantly, you will have almost 12 out of the 15 sectors which will be reporting a decline in both EBITDA and the PAT margins in this quarter. So this is going to be, this uh, This looks like going to be a, a, a tough quarter on the numbers. We may see uh, specific disappointments and uh, we still have memories of what the March quarter numbers were when some of the large caps got significantly, uh, uh, some of the large caps significantly disappointed and the impact on the stock prices were big. So uh, you, you just may see some few more happening this quarter as far as the earnings are concerned. Rajat, you're saying X oil and gas uh, growth might be just what, 8%? Earnings growth might be just 8%? Yes. Yes, X oil and gas, the growth in this quarter is likely to be just 8% because there would be at least 4 to 5 sectors which are going to degrow in earnings. First, PSU banks as a basket will report a degrowth. Telecom, infrastructure, uh, telecom infrastructure then you have real estate and and i'm and maybe one more sector so you will almost have five to six sectors which will report a degrowth in earnings this quarter and amongst the other sectors also like autos likely to report eight percent it would be 11 engineering would be 12 so you are not seeing any big bang numbers coming from any of the front line except the oil and gas Okay, uh, banks and autos. Let's start with banks. Uh, what What's going to be the issue there? Degrowth in numbers. Well, uh, you, uh, the degrowth in the bank numbers would uh, largely be driven by State Bank of India because we saw the kind of provisioning and the hit on the core numbers that they took last quarter. While there would be some rebound in that on a YOY growth basis last year, they almost had a profit number of closer to 3,000 crores and we, ex we expect this quarter to be around 1,600 to 1,700 crores. So for a bank of that size, if they report a 40 to 50 percent decline in profit, it pulls down the entire aggregates also. SBI, another quarter of issues, that's, that, that, that's what you're saying, uh, Rajat. Well, this would be a quarter where they would have to make more provisions. They still have to meet. They have. They still have to meet the 70% PCR guideline. They would still have to make some one-off provisioning, which would keep the numbers quite high. And uh, given the kind of range that we have seen last year in the profit of SBI from 3,000 crores to 22 crores, it is almost impossible to predict what this quarter numbers are going to look like. I think we will. Right now, we are just. Right now, we are just playing safe with a 16, 1700 crores number, but we hope to get more direction once they once they report their numbers for this quarter. Right. You know, because the uh, chairman at SBI had actually said that 
the last quarter numbers, uh, that kind of volatility and unpredictability, uh, don't expect that. You know, I, I don't I don't recall exactly, but he had put uh, put forth how much po how much more uh, provisioning they'd have to take. Uh, you know, f uh, over the next couple of quarters or so. All right, but you're saying SBI is going to drag down the earnings growth from overall uh, PSU banks. Autos, strong growth, uh, Rajat, at least in top line. Well, uh, strong growth in top line for specific segments, uh, because if you look at the top line, the growth numbers, the volume numbers for specific segments have still been good, uh, but not so much good for likes of Maruti or for likes of Tata Motor on the standalone business. While for the likes of Bajaj Auto and Mahindra, it's been okay. But I think the issue is again more to do with the margins. And that is why in this quarter, you would see while Bajaj Auto reporting a 24% growth in profits, you would see a Maruti or a Mahindra still reporting probably some kind of a decline in numbers. Uh, Tata Motors, this probably this this probably would be the quarter where the impact of JLR will start will start waning off, and you will start seeing the growth rates which looked very high last year start becoming more normalizing in this year. So that's why you you just have one Bajaj Auto which is reporting 20% plus. Rest all the numbers are sub 20%. Couple of others are showing a decline also. Uh, Rajat Morning, Ira joining in as well. Uh, techs always sort of kick off the season, Infosys in particular. Uh, any major anticipations from tech? I think CLSA had put out a report which uh, we talked about yesterday saying that it won't be a market moving quarter from a tech perspective. Well, uh, of course, given that Infosys growth guidance is a lot more back ended, once if, if they were to achieve their growth, then they will have to, to they'll have to guide for an 8% growth in. September quarter and thereafter another five and a half to six percent growth for December quarter and March quarter. So while uh, the numbers would be quite keenly watched, I think more importantly would be is that what do they guide for September quarter and whether there is any need for any upgrade in their full year EPS guidance because the street is almost uh, eight to nine percent above what the management has guided at the beginning of this year. And we typically see that this gap narrows down during the year. So this quarter, if there is no upgrade in the guidance of the management for the year, then I think you may see a downgrade by the street on Infosys number that they have projected, which is higher by 8 to 9% right now. Anecdotally, where is the concern for techs emerging from, Rajat? Is it generally linked to what's happening uh, globally, US, Europe? Uh, are there other issues that are, are coming up on the fore? Actually, in, in the case of tech, uh, the volume growth is again very, very robust. You still have an Infosys guidance of 20% uh, top line growth. We think TCS is likely to do 25% top line growth. So these macro issues are not hurting the, hurting the numbers. I think it's more to do on the margin side because Infosys itself had a very uh, muted guidance on the margins. And then in specific companies like TCS, you will have the tax impact starting to come off this quarter, this year onwards, because of which the bottom line growth would be much lower than the top line growth. But overall, I don't see that, that there are any issues from the quarterly point of view in tech. It is more to do that since in these companies, valuations look fairly, fairly okay on FY12, you need to get a greater confidence on FY13 for you to think about buying these stocks because most of them still trade at 17, 18 times on FY13. And if the earnings growth were not to be closer to 20%, then difficult for them to trade at 20 times FI13. All right. You said, uh, Rajat, that there could be some big one-off disappointments uh, like the last quarter. Last quarter, we had a few. Uh, you want to run us through them, apart from what we have spoken about? Well, last quarter, we had three big disappointments, which was Infosys, ONGC State Bank. Okay. As of now, I can't predict what this quarter disappointments would be because we are putting out our best estimates for each of the companies. But I think the macro environment has been has been quite tough, more so for the domestic companies. Uh, one point that I wanted to mention is that this quarter, the interest cost for our universe 
will be up by 13% quarter over quarter and this is after growing 8% for the last two quarters so we are talking about interest cost rising by 40% over the last three quarters for our universe and within this if you look at the large caps a lot of those companies are net cash in balance sheet so their impact cost is much lower which means that the companies uh, just about into the tier 1 mid caps or tier 2 mid caps are the one which are going to face a bigger damage and if in this environment you see top line growth slowing down then you are virtually talking about the entire net profit waning off for these companies so we think that interest cost rise and top line growth slowing down in few companies or sectors can can prove to be quite bad when they report this quarter got that roger